Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various aspects of geography. So in this session on oceanography, we are going to learn something very important that is related to climate change. It is called sea level changes or SLR. So what are these sea level changes? What are its various attributes and why is it important in current scenario related to the oceanography? So this is what we are going to discuss in today's session. And if you have not liked and subscribed to our channel, please do like the videos, do share the videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos. So now let's start the session on this particular topic that is sea level rise. So now let's understand the concept of sea level changes. What are these sea level changes and how we are concerned about it? In what ways does it affect us? So when we say climate change or global climate change, as we have already learned about this in climatology in details, we observe that climate change has a significant impact on the sea level changes as well. So if you observe here in this diagram, climate change has various attributes or various impacts on various attributes. What is that? Precipitation or runoff, CO2 levels, sea surface temperature that is SSTs and then you have sea level rise where we are concerned right now and wind wave, storm intensity. So if you observe all these factors are importantly related to climate change. So if you observe one part that is sea level rise, how does it influence or impact the various attributes related to the coastal area. So let's understand. First important is where it is linked with sediments and nutrients which is related to directly coastal flooding. Then we have wetland production that is directly impacted by ocean acidification. Then we have algal booms that is directly related to coral bleaching. Then we have coastal erosion that leads to inundation. Then we have beach rotation which is linked to benthic damage, right? And then we have infrastructure damage related to the storm surge and cyclones that we observe. So when we say sea level changes, it means all these attributes are going to be impacted in one way or the other directly or indirectly so if you observe coastal flooding ocean acidification coral bleaching inundation benthic damage and storm surge all these factors are directly or indirectly related to the sea level changes and why we are worried because it has been observed that due to extreme climate change due to extreme global warming the levels of the sea is rising and it's going to further rise ahead in the coming times. So that is one important point where we are also concerned about it. So let's elaborate further more. So when we say sea level rise, in short, it is also called SLR. It is a basically what? It is an increase in the level of the world's ocean due to the impacts or effects of climate change, especially which effect? Global warming, which is induced by three primary factors. What are these three primary factors? First is the thermal expansion, the first factor. So what is this thermal expansion? When water heats up, what happens to the water? It expands. So when it expands, what will happen? About half of the sea level rise over past 25 years is going to be attributed to what? Warmer oceans. It means it is expanding and it is occupying more space. So one is the thermal expansion part that is giving rise to the sea level. Then melting of glacier is the second point that is very commonly understood by all of us that if glaciers melt due to rising temperature, what will happen? There will be rise in the sea level automatically. Why? Because what happens due to the large areas of ice or snow which is melting, it will lead to the diminishing of the glaciers and at the same time, what will happen? It will change the seasonality and seasonal patterns that is snowfall due to later winters and earlier springs that is related to the climate change. And also what happens? It leads to an imbalance between the runoff and the ocean evaporation. Now remember, runoff is related to the surface water that is brought from the river to the ocean and when we say runoff and ocean evaporation if this balance is reduced or if this balance is actually disturbed it means that if there is more runoff and if it, there is less evaporation so what will happen if there is an imbalance that will lead to sea level rise so that is one important point then what we observe here is the loss of greenland and antarctica's ice sheets the major continental ice sheets that are there remember if the areas of these particular continental ice sheets are exposed to intense heating, what will happen? It will add more volume of water to the sea. So thereby changing the sea level apart from the salinity and temperature changes as well that we already know. So these are the three major primary factors which are of 
prime importance in terms of global warming and sea level rise. So IPCC released a special report on ocean and cryosphere in changing climate which underlined these dire changes taking place in the oceans, glaciers and ice deposits on land and sea. That is where the concern came from this particular report by IPCC. So what does it say? The report expects that oceans to rise between 10 to 30 inches. Now remember this is 10 to 30 inches rise by which time? 2100. So almost in next 80 years that is going to rise by 10 to 30 inches because of the temperatures warming up to 1.5 degree C furthermore. So if there is 1.5 degree C rise in temperature, it will lead to about 10 to 30 inches rise in the oceanic area across the world. So that is importantly in terms of sea level rise or sea level changes that we observe around the world ocean according to this IPCC report. Then if we look into the history of these changes, there has been historical changes already recorded and understood by the scientific community. So what are these historical changes? Let's understand. In the past, what we have seen the changes in sea level from IPCC analysis of 98, 2001 and 2004, what we observe since the last glacial maximum, remember 20,000 years, that is what we say last glacial maximum happened, mean sea level has risen by 120 meters. That's a great amount of rise if we say in last 20,000 years, right? Then between 15,000 to 6,000 years ago, MSL mean sea level rose up to average rate of 10 millimeters per year. That's very important. And following the last glacial period, local vertical land movements are still occurring today, as we know, as a result of large transfers of mass from ice sheets to the ocean. So this is also changing the isostasy through eustatic adjustment. Sea level rise is considered under eustasy. So that's important. And in last 6000 years, what has happened? The global MSL, that is mean sea level, variations on time scales of a few hundred years and longer are likely to have been less than 0.3 to 0.5 meters. That is important. Apart from that, this report also says what? That during 20th century, tide gauge data, remember tidal data shows what? That the range is 1 to 2 millimeter per year more than 19th century. So in last 100 years, the rate has increased. That is what is we are learning. And remember, there is a decadal variability. Now only in 10 years, there is a variability that has been observed, but no evidence of widespread increase in extremes other than that associated with a change in the mean value or that is mean sea level value has been observed in different parts of the world. So where we are concerned is this has been a historical changes from last 20,000 years that is last glacial maximum till present that is we are talking about decadal variability and there is a prediction that by 2100 will be rise in sea level further about 30 inches that we are observing right. So that's important in terms of historic changes. Now the concern is population, human population. That's where we are more concerned about that if there is a rise in sea level, what is going to happen? So remember, there is a vulnerable population group that resides in various areas of the world. So vulnerable population regions or populated regions and their predictions have been mentioned here, if you can observe. So if you observe this particular map, what we see this particular coastal part of India, which is heavily populated. Then again, Southeast Asia is heavily populated. Then some parts in Africa, some parts in South America and some parts in North America as well, apart from the European nations as well. So what we see considerably populations are going to be affected a great deal. Right. So that is one important point. So what we observe here, large coastal cities, that is populations having greater population than 8 million, over 50% of United States population live in coastal areas that is greater than 110 million. So that is a huge amount if you observe just for United States itself. And then if you consider the whole world, it's going to be a huge number that is going to be potentially impacted by the sea level changes. That's why we are worried. So if you observe highly populated delta regions of the world, remember vulnerable to what mean sea level rise. So if delta regions of the world are to be concerned, the mean sea level, mean sea level rise is going to impact. So remember what are going to be the impact coastal region more susceptible to the storm surges, flooding, beach, coastal erosion. This is going to be impacted. Disruption of activities, danger to life, infrastructure damage. These are the potential 
threats to us, then one meter rise in MSL, that is mean sea level, would enable 15 year storm to flood areas that today are only flooded by 100 year storms. So remember, the amount of area that is being flooded in 100 years presently will be flooded just in 15 years, just by one meter sea level rise. And that's a big concern across the world, right? That's important. And if you observe these areas, these areas are South Asia and Southeast Asia, which is going to be the most vulnerable group, apart from some parts in Europe and some parts in Americas as well. So that's going to be one of the most important areas. And urban flooding has become one of the major features, especially in those areas which are part of the coastal cities, right? Because of storm surges and also because of the drainage or waste or sewage systems that are now contaminated. So we see lots of urban flooding happening as well in future and flood damages would increase up to 58% for 30 centimeter rise even in sea level and we are expecting by 2100 how much about 30 inches of rise so just imagine how much would be the flood damages by 2100s at this particular rate so that's the concern related to vulnerable populated regions across the world according to the current trend that we observe so that's important to remember then what are the problems related to sea level rise if you observe carefully first one is the salt water will penetrate further inland and upstream in the estuaries so what you see salt water intrusion is going to be the major threat right so what will happen the estuarine area remember the estuarine area where you have river water mixing with the ocean water or sea water so this is the estuarine area so if there is more sea level rise more inland or inward intrusion of the salt water happens and that is going to be a problem for the estuarine ecosystem right so the balance is going to be deteriorated then higher salinity impairs both surface water as well and not just surface water remember we are dependent upon groundwater supply this saline water if it comes to the land area it is going to also impact our groundwater resources that's going to be a key concern as well and apart from that salt water intrusion would also harm ecosystems in what ways here is the list aquatic plants and animals that is salt marshes and mangroves are going to be impacted higher salinity has been found to decrease the seed germination so there is going to be a lot of problem on agriculture and horticulture then flooded agriculture land takes a long time to actually recover from that salinity remember if there is a salinity increase in the land you cannot do anything it is going to be rendered degraded land so that is the biggest problem that we are going to face if there is going to be a significant rise in sea level in future then problems that are not directly climate related but they are the problems so what are those remember the tides that is periodic changes due to changing orbital motions of earth and moon that is going to be also impacting and storm surges like atmospheric effects are also going to be there remember inverse barometer tropical storm hurricane surges these are going to be part of these impacts that are not directly related to climate but there is a impact then wind stress driven surge is also going to impact then further what we see is directly climate related impacts what is that isostatic level changes which we have already discussed in details in isostasy in geomorphology that is vertical movement of the land right then you have eustatic changes that is changes of total seawater mass right so that is going to impact it as well and then you have something called steric changes that is thermal expansion of water volume so remember isostatic change eustatic change and steric changes these are directly related to the climate change that we observe in the oceans so this is going to be the greatest impact now what we need to learn is what are the mechanisms of the change in sea level how it changes so the fluctuations of sea level involve three basic mechanisms what are the three basic mechanism first is the changes in ocean water volume second is the changes in ocean basin volume and then third is the changes in shape of the earth remember because of mass changes there is a potential that shape of the earth is also going to be impacted because of isostatic and eustatic changes right so such changes occur due to which factors the following factors First is the change in volume of mid-oceanic ridges. This is going to impact. It has been observed since the late Cretaceous period that there has been a steady increase in volume of mid-oceanic ridges, right? Then accumulation of sediments on ocean floor. This is going to be impacted. Then impact of orogenesis, that is mountain genesis. 
So for example, it is assumed that Tibetan Plateau is made up of crustal layers of twice the average thickness and it is going to produce a fall of global sea level by 26 meter due to increased volume of ocean basin. So this is going to be a balance check balance option for orogenesis or remember this is going to be a global change in isostatic levels, right? Then drying out of small ocean basins. Now remember what is this drying out of small ocean basins? The smaller ocean basins now are going to be dried out. For example, an analogous evidence of this desiccation and sea level rise is found in case of southern part of Atlantic Ocean. If you observe, in its nascent stage, in the early stage, what happened in Cretaceous period, when the isolated ocean basin dried out, this led to a rise in sea level because of water of southern part of Atlantic Ocean returned to the water body of the surrounding areas. So if there is going to be a local ocean basin changes, so that can be part of the mechanism or the factors for these changes, right? So we have all these major planetary process related to geomorphology that we have already studied that are going to impact the entire scenario of how the mass and volume is distributed across the world related to water. So that's going to be major issue in future. Then the fifth one is geoidal effect hypothesis. Remember this hypothesis was a model developed in 1970s by geophysicists and many geomorphologists who predicted what? That six ocean basins zones which witnessed Holocene sea level change. Remember the last glacial maximum coming from Holocene sea level change due to both isostatic as well as geoidal changes. So, however, sea level changes due to geoidal impact is still not proved, but there is a kind of hypothesis that tries to say that, you know, if there is this change, it is going to impact due to the isostatic changes. So, remember, the ocean basins are going to be impacted and the geoidal, that is our Earth's shape is going to get impacted. Then, short term changes in global sea level, that is going to happen. So, 5 to 6 centimeters in sea level is observed in one year. And if it is going for a further fluctuation, you see 20 to 30 centimeters or more in all coastal areas of the world that is going to happen then it happens due to short-term factors and what are the short-term factors density changes atmospheric pressure velocity of ocean currents ice formation and fall in sea level piling of water across windward coast so if you observe this diagram the low pressure then you have sea level here upward movement of air current and this is the local changes that happen then sea level rise and sea level fall this is going to happen in the direction of ocean currents as we observe. So these are the local changes of short term factors that relate to the sea level changes at particular places. So this is also going to give impacts to the long term changes that is important to remember here. So at last, what is the adaptation or mitigation or remedial measure or adaptation strategy to the threat of sea level rise? What should people do? So there are certain Adaptation strategies like relocation is going to be one of them. So people are relocating. For example, Kiribati Island, if you observe, has planned to shift to Fiji, right? Where the capital of Indonesia is being relocated from Jakarta to Borneo. So this is one relocation factor coming up. Then what we see building sea walls. Now giant sea wall or giant Garuda in 2014, it meant to actually protect the city from the floods which was built in Indonesia. So that is one important point. Then building enclosures. For example, the researchers have proposed in Northern European Enclosures Dam that is NEED enclosed all North Sea to protect 15 North European countries from rising seas. The Persian Gulf, the Mediterranean Sea, the Baltic Sea and the Irish Sea apart from the Red Sea were also identified as the areas that could benefit from this particular building enclosures. So now people are building walls and enclosures as an adaptation strategy that is going to be future then architecture to steer flow of water now remember the steering of flow of water is important that water does not get stagnant at a place so that city that is Rotterdam built barriers and a good drainage and innovative architectural features such as water square remember this is important in terms of the flowing of water or steering the flow of water smoothly with temporary ponds so this is one type of adaptation strategy that people can adopt and further reduce the threat of sea level rise that we observe here. And what is the way forward? If you observe, the way forward was discussed in Paris Agreement related to sea level rise and it says that some steps in this direction would include what? clean alternatives like solar and wind energy that is coming away from fossil fuel then instituting carbon taxes on industries and subsidies for reducing carbon footprint of people then carbon sequestration by geoengineering and natural methods and apart from that afforestation and reducing deforestation subsidizing research and climate change these are certain methods or these are certain ideas that were pitched in Paris agreement 
Remember, but these have been part of sustainable development goals since long time and people are still working on it to have clean alternative energy because if you want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to curb this menace of sea level rise, we need to switch over to the cleaner fuel, cleaner sources of energy. That's the most important way forward if you observe. So now, when we have learned in details the various aspects of sea level rise, sea level changes, its impact, its causes, in the sessions to come, we are going to talk about something that is going to be one more aspect related to marine issues, that is about the marine pollution. So stay tuned, stay safe, Keep watching.